Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap-up. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly pop culture wrap-up. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies. Let's get right into it. Aliens vs. Avengers from Marvel Comics. It debuts as a four-issue series this July from the House of Ideas. Now, any other time, and we've ever since... Marvel got the rights to Aliens and Predator and even Star Wars and Disney and all that stuff. We were thinking these crossovers were on the horizon. Well, it's taken a little bit longer to get to them. We've already had Wolverine versus Predator, and that was a success for Marvel. So why not do Aliens versus Avengers? Any other time, I would kind of scoff at this idea and be like, we'll wait and see. But it's written by Jonathan Hickman with artwork by Asad Ribic. That's the exact same team as Secret Wars. It's Hickman, it's Aliens and Avengers, which seems silly, and sure, whatever, but it's Hickman, and it's Ribic. it's... I'm really excited for this. I'm super excited. It's Jonathan Hickman. It's Jonathan Hickman. Anybody else, and I probably wouldn't be this excited, but I cannot believe that they got Jonathan Hickman and Isad Ribic to do Aliens vs. Avengers. Four-issue series starting in July... We'll see what happens. Namor is going to have a new eight-issue series debuting in July, written by Jason Aaron, with artwork by Paul Davidson. This is supposed to re-energize uh, re the whole Atlantis myth in Marvel Universe, its place in the Marvel Universe, Namor's spot. He's on the surface, he's beaten up, he's in prison, and all kinds of turmoil are going on underneath the sea. So that's what this one's going to be about. Jason Aaron doing eight issues of Namor. Annihilation 2099 has been teased by Marvel for July, something in July involving the 2099 universe, as well as possibly the Annihilation Wave. So kind of think of it as... I would expect the Annihilation Wave in 2099 and maybe like a reboot or relaunch of the 2099 properties after that. We got Wolverine Deep Cut, a four-issue series starting in July, written by Chris Claremont with artwork by Edgar Salazar. This is going to go back to those outback days of the X-Men post-fall of mutants in the 80s and focus in on Wolverine and his plight before the attack of the Reavers. So it's going to involve... Stuff with him and Sabretooth and the Outback era of X-Men. It's Chris Claremont, so I know a lot of fans from that era that are going to be very excited for this. Then we've got Werewolf by Night with a new ongoing series debuting in August, right after Blood Hunt starts wrapping up. And this is going to be written by Jason Liu with artwork by Sergio Davila. This one... I'm kind of excited for it. I like the character of Werewolf by Night. I love the old school run. I got the run by Paul Jenkins and Leo Manko from like the 90s or something like that. And I like horror stuff. I like classic supernatural horror stuff. So it's cool this is going to be spinning out of Blood Hunt. And like Blood Hunt, it will have polybagged red band editions with more gore and violence. So that's interesting. We'll see. It's billed as an ongoing, but expect like, what, 8 to 12 issues? That's an ongoing at Marvel. What if Donald Duck became Wolverine? It's a one-shot in July. They're doing it. They, they're not satisfied with just those amazing Spider-Man variant covers of what if the Disney were the Fantastic Four or the Avengers or Spider-Man or something like that. They're doing a full-fledged book. What if Donald Duck was Wolverine? And I tell you what. I'm kind of all here for it. The Nice House by the Sea is a new 12-issue series debuting from DC Black Label in July, written by James Tynan IV, with artwork by Alvaro Martinez Bueno. This is the long-anticipated and awaited sequel to Nice House by the Lake, but it is a whole new story, but very much similar. Uh, Ten new strangers in a house, this time by the sea, not by the lake, orchestrated by aliens. There are some differences. They don't know each other in this book, unlike Nice House on the Lake. They all knew each other. They also are here by choice. We'll see. Nice House on the Lake was a really solid book, but it kind of I kind of lost it just like a little bit past midway through. It went through some delays. This seems like I would I don't know. I would rather have Tynan and Bueno do something different, not like another take on the same kind of concept. That being said, it could be really good, and the preview art looks 
pretty solid for it. Then we got Action Comics 1067 in July, bringing in Gail Simone and Eddie Barrows as the creative team. This is continuing the superstars lineup that started with Jason Aaron and John Timms. It's been slightly interrupted by the House of Brainiac story by Josh Williamson, but right after that, Gail Simone is coming in with Eddie Bar uh, Barrows on the artwork to tell a three-issue story set in the early days of Superman's past, so that's exciting enough. We'll check it out. Witchblade is being relaunched from Top Cow slash Image in July. This one's going to be written by Marjorie Bennett and Giuseppe Cafaro on the art. This is a complete reimagining and reboot for Witchblade for a new audience. When I met Mark Silvestri at Megacon in February, he told me about this. He told me about something else that's coming after. If you think about it hard enough, you'll probably figure it out. But I'm excited for this. Witchblade was never necessarily my jam, but I have tried to get into it. I would love to do a top-down on issue number one. I need to get a hold of an issue number one and just do a top-down flip-through of it or something like that. But I think it's exciting to bring this back. They tried to relaunch this a few years ago. It didn't really work. Looking at the art here, it seems like it's taking what worked in the 90s, but updating it for a modern audience, so I'm excited to see what happens here. Patra is a new one in August from Dark Horse Comics, four issues written by James Robinson with artwork by Scott Collins. This starts a new imprint that James Robinson has for horror and mystery-based books over at Dark Horse. The premise of this one is pretty interesting. This woman, um, she has no memory of anything. She just knows that whenever she gets scared, uh, a weapon, like a knife, and a horrific mask appear. She's also being stalked by a 1980s-inspired slasher. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Scott Collins is a great artist. James Robinson is a solid writer. So we'll see what they do together here. Biker Mice from Mars is coming out in July from Oni Press. Three issues written by Melissa Flores with artwork by Francis Portella. Um... I, I liked Biker Mice from Mars. I didn't get into it as much as, say, like Turtles or He-Man or Transformers. It was a little bit after my time or just on the cusp, I should say. I was really more focused on Power Rangers at that time. But I like Biker Mice from Mars enough. We've covered on Marvel in the 90s the Biker Mice from Mars comic book that Marvel did. Um, Oni Press just launched this Nacelle verse. They have that one shot tying in together things like Power Lords, the Centaurs, or the Sectars, my bad. Um, it'd be cool if the Centurions were a part of it. But the Sectars, Biker Mice from Mars. So it's interesting. I didn't know if that would work, but the one shot actually worked for me. So just a three issue series. We'll check it out. Biker Mice from Mars. We Called Them Giants is a new graphic novel from Image in November, written by Karen Gillen with artwork by Stephanie Hans. It's about a woman who awakes in a post-apocalyptic world ruled by giants or something like that. I don't know. It's the same team as Die, the critically acclaimed book Die. Gillen and Hans together delivering a graphic novel that's definitely going to make some waves when it releases in November. Got a couple trailers. Transformers 1 animated movie starring Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime. On paper, that doesn't sound like a good idea. In the trailer, it seems to get, I guess, kind of work. It seems to be dealing with a young version of Optimus Prime as Orion Pax and his buddy Megatron, right? And it looks like Bumblebee and maybe RC are there too, but it's like them as young Transformers. It's like a coming-of-age tale. It's going, I guess, show how Megatron turns to the dark side or something. Apparently him and Optimus or Orion were besties back in the day. It looks like it's geared towards a younger audience. It looks like it's silly. It looks like it should be fun for that audience. Is that audience necessarily me? Maybe not. But does that mean that it's a bad movie or that it should be mocked and ridiculed? Probably not. But we'll see what happens. Trap. It's a new trailer. A new M. Night Shyamalan movie starring Josh Hartnett. It's very interesting. So the trailer... This dude, Josh Hartnett, is taking his daughter to a concert, like some kind of big super pop star. Takes her to a concert. He goes to use the restroom. He finds out that there are a bunch of police all over the place and even like like an excessive amount of a police presence there. So he asks one of the people that works there, what's up? They're like, yo, there's a serial killer and they believe they got a tip that he's going to be here at this concert. This whole concert, everything is a setup. It's a trap to get this dude. Then you're in the trailer, you're like, how is this going to spread through a whole movie? Is this guy just going to be trying to protect his daughter from the serial killer? Then the trailer reveals that Josh Hartnett is the serial killer. 
And so it's now about his paranoia of going through this concert with his daughter, knowing that they're after him and they probably know who he is. That seems kind of neat. I'm not completely sold on it, but I'll definitely check it out. I think it releases in August. Check the trailer out for yourself. Let me know what you think. So that's what we have for you here on the wrap up. Let me know any of your thoughts on any of the news that we covered or anything that we missed in the comments down below. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Um, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe and join us over at patreon.com PCP if you want to help support the channel and unlock exclusive content like an upcoming exclusive to Patreon watch along where I'll be watching The Crow along with you and we're going to be talking about it. The Old School Crow, 1994, Brandon Lee. That's what we're going to be doing very soon, in just a couple of weeks. So if you want to join, go over to patreon.com slash PCP, hit the $5 level or above. You'll have access to that when it happens. Thank you so much, y'all, for checking out the video. And uh, I already did the like and share thing, right? So what do I say now? Now I go, I've been rocking Robbie Billups. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on living, loving, and learning. Station. Pop, pop. Boom!